Hey there YouTubers! Well, I'm going to do another weaving video. Um, I know I haven't done a cooking video in ages and I've been thinking about what I should do for that, but uh, the mood just hasn't hit me. Anyways, so I'm standing, I'm in front of the loom, you're behind the loom, um, and as you can see it's got some warp sitting here, not here, but the project that I'm going to do next is going to be another warp rep rug. Say that three times really fast. Anyways, um, if you go back in my videos, you'll find that one that I did, um, I don't know, what was it, a few months ago? Maybe even last year. I guess it was last year. There was kind of a pink and gray, or a maroon and gray uh, warp rep rug and this is going to be the same concept just a totally different pattern a different different pattern and different colors but something I learned back on that project was that the built-in rattle on this Louette spring loom is the, the teeth are too fine I can't use that rattle um, when I'm using thick threads like this and as with as many threads per inch as I need for warp rep, which is 36 threads per inch to make it really look decent, um, that rattle just can't handle it. So I built myself a rattle out of uh, a couple of boards I picked up at Menards and boards and right here I've got a bunch of small cotter pins. I, I drilled some holes into one of the boards and did that. So I'm going to bring the camera a little bit closer and just give you a close-up of my new homemade rattle for keeping the thread straight as I'm winding on when I'm doing uh, something that needs you know thick threads 36 per inch way too much for the built-in rattle of this loom so let's take a look a closer look at this all right, here we are a little bit closer. So this rattle that I built just sits on top of the loom. You can see I can lift it up. There's the built-in rattle and those the dents in that the teeth are just way too close together. So I built this one with a piece, I think this was uh, four foot long by um, one inch by eight inches wide. Picked up a board, and here's a one by two by four. And you can see I drilled some holes. Cotter pins are going to go in there. Moving over to here, you can see the um, threads that I've already got on there. Now I've only got just a teensy bit over half of the warp measured out, so I've got to do this same amount again. Um, it's all over the lee sticks. I, I keep putting it on from the side and sliding it on one inch worth at a time. The, um, the openings in the rattle between the cotter pins are one inch. So I'm working on it. You can see the colors are going to be basically kind of fall color type things. I've got a, a it's called burnt orange and then I've got a, a dark, darker brown and it's called natural linen color but it's not linen it's carpet warp so you get the idea there of what the colors are going to be like well youtubers you can hopefully you can see that I've got the entire warp measured and on the loom and I'm currently winding it onto the back beam um, because of the fact that I go over the top of the loom I think I've mentioned this before but I'll say it again I prefer to have my lee sticks tied up at the top rather than in a straight line. Uh, when it comes time to pull things through, I'll lower them. But for now, I like them up here so I've got a pretty straight line from over the top of the loom all the way down to the back beam. So now it's simply a case of turning this thing. And every once in a while, putting in one of these handy dandy separator sticks.
grabbing it on the other side. And turning some more. Still winding on. Just thought I'd show it to you from the other side. So you can see the... I, I go fairly slow with this. But you can see those extra dowels that I put in there for tensioning. And that gives me just a little bit more tension than I would have if I were uh, just letting them hang. But uh, it's helpful to have that back there. So, And you can see we're moving slowly. My assistant is trying to sleep through all this uh, setting up of the loom. So we'll just leave him alone and go over to here. I know it's kind of bright because I've got that light right on the loom. But as you can see, I'm about halfway done with uh, threading the heddles for this warp rep rug. Say that again three times fast. But what I wanted to do was show you one of the little things, very minor modifications that I made to my loom um, to help me as I'm threading. You, you can see I've got a 12 shaft loom and occasionally I have a hard time counting what shaft am I threading. So what I did, let's look at it right here, is I took a magic marker and I wrote on each shaft the shaft number. Now I used Roman numerals to do this not because I particularly enjoy Roman numerals but because they're made with straight lines which made it easier to write on that curved surface of the shaft uh, than it would have been with the Arabic numerals that we normally use uh, you know, twos and threes would have been, and five would have been difficult, so would six and eight. So, Roman numerals were easier, and I can read them pretty much just as well as the numerals we usually use. So, just to help me when I'm looking at the, the, um, the shafts from this angle as I'm threading, I can easily see here, you know, one, two, three, four, and I've put them in three places, the numbers. This is the older set of numbers that I put on well over a year ago. The ones on the two sides are probably only about six months ago. This is probably two years, I'll bet, by now. But it just helps me as I'm sitting here looking, okay, which shaft do I want? Do I want to go to shafts five and six? Well, I look, I see the five and six. I go over to here and I pull out the heddles that I need for what I'm going to thread in this area. And then as I'm done, I push the threaded heddles over to the side and I do another small batch. Um, for me, this helps. I can imagine for other people it wouldn't work. I can imagine with uh, different styles of looms. In fact, for my um, Ashford loom, this wouldn't work at all because the bars down there are little pieces of, of metal and metal doweling, metal rods, and you can't write on them with um, magic marker. But for me, this is a help. So, anyways, I'm working on getting this all set up to do this rug, and there's just a little tidbit of one of my little tricks, if you will, for making things easier for me. Now just a little bit of threading heddles. So we'll we'll do this. I've got it set up to where I uh, when I counted out my threads on the back and measured, I did them two at a time, a dark and a light. So right here I'm doing a dark and a light. And the dark always goes on the even numbered thread and the light always, or even numbered shaft heddle and the light always goes 
on the odd numbered. So in this case, I'm getting dark on shaft two and light on shaft one. And obviously at different places in the process, I might be going for shafts four and three or six and five, whatever. But it's still dark light, dark light, dark light. And just to make it easier for my counting purposes, I'm doing these in sets of 12 threads at a time, just so I can check them off on um, my little uh, cheat sheet of what threads go on what shafts. I've got it all divided into sets of 12. So I do 12 threads at a time, six darks and six lights. And then I push them off to the side. So this is the threading. And it is putsy. You've seen me do this before, I know. Might be a little more visible this time only because I'm using really thick thread with this carpet warp. So there we are. There's 12 more threads done. We'll just kind of comb them out once. Tie a quick slip knot into it so that I don't have anything get pulled out like that. And set it aside. And I think that's going to be about it for this particular video. Um, the, obviously I'm not weaving yet, but um, I will be uh, doing that. I want to get this up onto YouTube done enough for now that um, you can see it all. So, catch you later. Thanks a lot for watching my video. Thanks uh, for subscribing to my channel if you are a subscriber and if you're not a subscriber I would very much appreciate it if you did subscribe to my channel. Bye bye!